So our first speaker today is Sergei Galkin, uh, who will uh, uh, talk about final variety of lines of rational cubic curves. I'd like to start to recognize this for giving me an opportunity to speak here because it's hard to imagine where to go. Uh, I'll speak about my joint work with Evgeny. Louder? Yes. Oh, okay. Thank you. I will speak about my joint work with Evgeny Schender. You see it somewhere here? Yeah. yeah. Uh, it appeared today on a pad. Number is this one, so you can just check it simultaneously. So it's about <coughs> user four folks. Six dimensional vector space and some homogeneous polynomial of the elements. Group red zeros. One. At least I assume it's smooth, so it's smooth. There are some cases for it singular, which also sometimes interesting. But mostly I'm not concerned with the smooth case, uh, so this is the cube of purple. And my question, one can ask whether it's rational or not, or if it's still the functions. It's a for this Can I give some criterion? Characterize, give some characterizations of those that are rational. And uh, in his 1943 paper, I just read from the first two sentences, so I can tell them that it says that probably uh, all uh, cubic three folds, so one dimension less, is rational only if it's singular. And that's a theorem of, theorem of Clements and Griffins, now, but probably some. In the course done before, so Clement's <coughs> Griffiths. Let's say that uh, if dimension of x, I can, I, I can do further damage, let's say d is to 4 here, but we can put the plus 1. The whole same story. And with the d dimensional cubic hypersurface, cubic is the smallest degree when it makes sense, or Algebraically closed field because quadric I can always project from a point. So quadrics are algebraically closed if they have points, they are rational. For cubics, this wouldn't work because the projection from a point already gives a double power, so it needs some other idea. Uh, so cubic surfaces are known to be rational for again over complex numbers. So that's a very classical thing. And uh, for cubic triples, it turns out when they're smooth, they are not so smooth. Smooth cubic triples. Irrational. And Thomas starts that probably smooth cubic triples are irrational, but for four dimensional cubics, there are some examples that already were known. So maybe the earliest reference I know is might be Morin, but there could be some people before it. So Morin in 1940 gave some examples. So easy example of rational smooth cubic, no well known example. Uh, <coughs> is the following. Take uh, V equals to V1 plus V2. Dimension V1 equals to dimension V2. Then inside P of V, we have this joint union of two positive spaces. And now look for take G such that G is restricted to the one equals to zero and G is restricted to the two equals to zero. So consider a cubic hypersurface that contains two projective spaces, but two projective spaces, like cubic surface that contains two lines. Uh, then there's a well-known construction. You have one space, another space, two lines. If you have 
any point here, then any vector in the vector decomposed into sum of two vectors, right? So V equals to one maybe U if you have any vector U inside P it's V1 plus U2. So two point in this space you can associate these two points. Right. And how to associate it? There's just a unique second line to this union. Double, so I consider some second to W, and variety of seconds to W, they span the whole space, and most of the points, they, there's just a unique set. When I consider the second line, look for its intersection. So I look for A intersect of this X. Then uh, there are two possibilities. Either whole line lines inside the hypersurface X, so maybe A lies inside X, A is a. So it's the same as well. Or L intersected with X is three points. And what are these three points? One point should lie here, right? Because we have already one point here, CP, one point here, Q, and another point R. So I can construct a map. On, on the other hand, if I have two points, I can just draw a unique line, and well, this line that intersects my hypersurface as it lies inside the hypersurface. So it intersects on two points and one more point. So there's a map the Q goes to R. So if u belongs to p of u1 times p of u2, r is just belongs to x. So there's a map from product to project spaces to q to hypersurface, and this map is rational. I can go this way or other way in general. <coughs> so there's one well known example that says in all even dimensions there, there, there exists a rational cubic uh, hypersurface. Well, you need to construct some smooth example. For example, you can take something like x1, take coordinates x1, x n by 1 by n, and consider sum of xi, y i, xi plus y i. This is g. So this is an example of smooth cubic surface. The spaces are v1 given by all xi is to 0, and v2 is all y i is to 0. So it was known that there are examples of smooth cube hypersurfaces in all even dimensions. And uh, up to now, it's still an open question whether there existed at least one irrational cube hypersurface in dimension more than three. So we know examples of rational. We know that all smooth one-dimensional three dimensions are irrational. And there's not a simple example of irrational hypersurface in dimension more than three. But there are some expectations. <coughs> So in 1940, uh, Morin gives, uh, if you count the parameters, then you see that cubic forms that contains two planes, they are too special. They, they, their moduli is much lower than moduli of cubic hypersurfaces, but there are some other constructions. So you can replace uh, this space W with maybe some other space W with the same properties. Right? So, <coughs> so Morin, in 1940, uh, he discussed this case of what's now among probably five young cubic hypersurfaces. So that X that contains some W, and this W is some special surface, a special surface of special kind. Know that Instead of two planes, I can look for any other surface that has the same property. So called one apparent double point, this means the true generic point in project space, I can draw a unique circuit. So, true, well, maybe say variety of seconds of W map to map to P of V is birational. But as through generic point in my project space, I can draw a unique segment line such that it passes on W in two more points. Then I can do the same construction, and there are more examples of this kind that were found by Severus, so there are some <laughs> W, uh, like some scrolls, scrolls of degree 4, and some dependency surface of degree 5, surface S5, and in the paper in 1940, Warren says that all cubic hypersurfaces, they contain some of them, some scrolls, so all of them are rational. He made some discount of parameters, it turns out there's only a divisor of them that contains them. And probably Fan already noticed this in 1943, and then he did make some discussions about uh, that these conditions are related to each other. Uh, 
<coughs> but still, so there are some known at least device of rational things, but in, in the model aspects of the surface. But a generic expectation probably that was told by say Diskovsky in the 70s. <coughs> Okay, uh, so, uh, could you please repeat your point? So you have uh, some special surface. Yeah, some special surface. For example, the surface yeah. of degree five. Yeah. So you have a cubic height surface that contains the yeah. surface yeah. of degree five. Yeah. Then it's rational. Uh -huh. And construction yeah. is the same. We consider all, all the possible seconds mm -hmm. to the surface. So the second that you want to intersect mm -hmm. in, in three points, yeah. two on your things, and one more. So fact, just, just the same construction. Classically, these are called uh, surfaces with one apparent number. One apparent, one apparent number. When you project from yeah. general point, you just yeah, so, yeah, the projection, one second. projection from generic point will have one extra. Huge literature on about these surfaces. Yeah. So, conjecture of Viskovsky that x if uh, h4 of x z has only on on one dimensional. Algebraic cycles, and then x is irrational. Or other way around. So if you have a rational cubic four for say it's possible, it's not all of them, but it should have a dimension of cycles should be at least two. So it, it means that should be some algebraic cycle other than the linear section. So all cubic four holes, they have cubic surfaces inside them, just linear sections, and somehow the expectations. By Stosky, but there should be more. Probably it was also similar expectations of Fana. Uh, and uh, there's a work of uh, Stosky student Trebuk that gives a couple of constructions that are more or less the same. Maybe all of them are the same, just you can re rephrase them differently. Yeah. So. <coughs> Three constructions of functionality, and he knows that indeed, and he knows the, con the three constructions of rational cubic four that he did, so all of them has this property that there are these cycles. What is the one dimensional body? Intersection H. Yeah, okay, so let's say for four cycles, right? H2 to H2 to Xc. That's Z to one. Alpha, so if alpha is equals to one, or maybe say rational, alpha more than one. If x is rational, at least. And you know, examples of rational that's known, it's true. And <coughs> uh, another direction that's important here that's a workshop on chromatic syntactic arrangement, so in 19. 48, and finally, um, they studied variety of lines on this uh, on the cubic form. Well, it was also studied by Pana and so on, but so called Pana variety of lines. So, what they noticed that Pana variety of lines are denoted by f, x on port, or just f, <coughs> is uh, chromorphic. Then maybe B. <coughs> and it varies, of course, smoothly with, with variation of X. Uh, if X is Python, if X is Python, uh, then F X. This isomorphic to Q2 of S. <coughs> so maybe let, let me give another definition of 5 from of 5 from cubic purple. Just 5 from purple. <coughs> If I have some vector space A maybe six dimension six dimensional vector space, consider uh, all the possible six times six Q symmetric matrices. So we call lambda 
square of A. So this is 6 times 6 square symmetric. So then we for locus of those matrices is such that their uh, generic one has rank 6 and uh, some of those are degenerate has rank at most 4. So look for those, let's say, P is defined inside P of rank square of A. It's not like matrices of rank, rank at most 4. So, this is actually a cubic hypersurface given by equation, but 5 term of this cubic, of this uh, 5 term of the 6 times 6 matrix vanishes. So 5 term of 6 times 6 matrices is a polynomial of degree 3 of 15 variables. So it gets some particular cubic hypersurface inside P14. And uh, five -fion, uh, cubic fourfold is called 5 unit if it's just intersection of, of this particular P with just some uh, P4. So X. Is Python if exists some uh, B inside the uh, square of A such that the match of B equals to 6 and X is isomorphic to P intersect of the scale of B. <laughs> and to five and cubic fourfold, one can actually associate the K3 surface. So uh, I have a space of matrix of, of rank at mode 4, but in the dual space I can consider uh, as Q-symmetric uh, tensors of rank at most 2. And this applies equally projectively to, and this is just the Grassmannian 2, 6, so I have B inside, uh, inside projectization of A, and on the other hand I have projectization of A dual, and I have just G here, so G is just uh, forms, forms of rank at most 2, but that the same is equal to 4. So this is just the grass mining, but the grass mining to 6 because, because if, if I have this form, I can take a quotient by its kernel and I have two-dimensional space on it, but subjective method two-dimensional space, so it's not from A to C2, so I just pull back from, from here to here. So this G is grass mining to 6, so if here I consider P intersected with P of B, then here I can associate S, so P intersects, and S with G intersected with orthogonal of B. So this was six-dimensional space, this is the vector space of four-dimension six, so it will be just a linear section of Grassmannian to six, so four-dimension six, and it's a K3 surface of degree 14. So this is K3 surface. K3 surface. <coughs> And uh, this is kind of K3 surface associated to, to cubic 5 and 4 by projective duality. But by then I say that if x is 5 and cubic 4 then its variety of lines is actually isomorphic to a Hilbert scheme on this K3 surface. Okay. So a particular shows that it applies in this deformation class. <coughs> so in, uh, uh, in fact, you should assume also that the K3 has no lines and the cubic has no planes. Like under, under some generic assumptions, yeah. yeah. Uh, in particular, well, let's put C, in particular, particular at exists S such that at X is by rational to do to S, and S is K3. Now I can formulate our association was made the first time by Fano. Uh, I think Fan somehow associated this uh, surface S, but he doesn't discuss the. He discussed the dimension. But he also map. associates. He yes. discussed the dimension yeah. map and shows that uh, the base locus of P4 is. Uh, yeah, so the other way to construct the surface S is we have the special W is to look for just it those lines for the cubic, those lines that apply. So, other way to discuss. Define S is kind of this way. Thomas way of describing S, Thomas way to describe S is to take S that's such lines inside, well, cross minimum to six, such that first of all this lines lie inside the cubic, and second that they are second to this W. L is second 
Constable with these two ports. Uh, remember, this construction of functionality, there was this uh, variety of one pair of double points. This surface is bi-rational, yeah. Yeah, yeah, well, bi-rational, so it's a rational model. Anyway. So, some way how you can construct it more geometric without the project. And the funnel constructs using two this. Maybe there's some construction you can do this, like how to construct another one. Anyway, so what I'm going to formulate some um, theorem that says that for uh, it should be the general case, uh, like this statement last time. So I started from rational, so as of knowledge, I forgot to tell, but for fun of you, maybe we put zero, x are rational. So there are two things here. I have cubic, smooth cubic hypersurface, it's rational, and its variety of lines is birational to Hilbert scheme uh, of two points on some KT surface. Uh, and that will be a more or less formulation of our theorem. <coughs> Theorem says the following. Assume uh, star, you know, and wait star like this. Then, if x is a smooth rational cubic purple, or for each, or each. Smooth Russian cubic purple X exists a K3 surface surface S such that Fx on variety of lines is by rational to the scheme of the points on S. What is star? Ah, star is the condition that I'm going to write now, some conjecture that has nothing to do with cubic purple. <coughs> <laughs> Assume that insulation conjecture is true. So start. Start at the following step. A that I define as plus a fine line is not a zero isolator. The gross and the green is polarized. So what is this? Varieties, you can choose any field, so I look for rotating the cream of complex varieties. The complex loop of varieties uh, is a commutative ring, so it's a free abelian group, so it's abelian group generated by. So generators are just some classes of algebraic varieties. So X is algebraic complex variety, complex algebraic variety or C. And relations are the following. If I have some algebraic variety and I have closed sub variety, so relations. So I consider free abelian group with these generators and now relations are uh, relations. If I have Z inside X, some closed subvarieties are closed, then class of X equals the class of Z plus class of the complement. The complement to closed subvarieties is also an algebraic variety. And operations, so addition is just comes because it's a free abelian group, there's also multiplication, not multiplication, multiplication. It used just by Cartesian multiplication. So class of X times class of Y is just class of Cartesian product. It descends well to the multiplication of things. So, so this is just some particular commutative ring. And uh, inside this particular commutative ring, there's a particular element. So just class of a fine line. And the conjecture that this element is not a zero device in this ring. 
So I got this assumption, this theorem on the right, should hold now how it happens. Uh, so what I should note that uh, this ring was introduced in the 60s by Grotendieck, and around 10 years ago it was found that it, it has some zero divisors, actually. This ring has zero divisors by, well, some zero divisors are generated by abelian varieties that works on young Kuhnian. There are some, so not the domain, so some zero divisors, some of some zero divisors. So Kuhnian constructs some divisors using abelian varieties and polar over non algebraically closed field constructs some zero divisors just using conics. And it was a rather complicated ring to work with until a uh, theorem of Wittner and Layen around 10 12 years ago that made it much easier to work with it. And there's another very beautiful theorem by Larson and Lins. Sorry, I'll work so yeah. if somebody manages to construct a cubic four pole yeah. uh, that is rational, yeah. and such that this variety of lines is not birational, yeah, then, uh, then he disproves this conjecture. Yeah. yeah, so this conjecture is due so to a thing. Yeah. So that's conjecture, right? So conjecture by the and Lazar. Also, there's another question where the so-called Capranus zeta function is a rational function or not, so usually for surfaces it's not, but they also conjecture that this is inverted. It's rational or right? inversion. Uh, not inverted, but it's not a zero device. Uh, it's very often that people they work with this ring and they that they actually invert it. So there's so-called ring of motivic measures, or sometimes it's called other way around. Where they do localize in the sink, and it's a typical thing to localize or to consider the completion, but it's a very important property just in the sink, whether it's zero divisor or not, if it's not a zero divisor, then it gives some consequences to the rational geometry. And if the sink is actually hard to, hard to deal with, I'll, I'll tell you a little bit more about this thing now. There's a theorem by usually due to Bittner, that is supposed by Vajenko, that says that there's another description for this ring. Instead of taking as generators all varieties, you can just take on this smooth project if and some other relations. So let's denote K. So the theorem is that there's a map from uh, K here to K. And it's an isomorphism where k beer is the, the following generators of generators are classes of smooth projective varieties, x is smooth projective relations is the following. If you have smooth projective variety and a smooth projective sub variety, you can consider a blow up of this variety with this center. Has an exceptional divisor, and the relation is uh, block zx minus t equals to x minus z. So what I wrote here is a relation between classes of four smooth projective varieties. So everything here is smooth and project. And the theorem that there exists a homomorphism of this thing, and it is isomorphic over complex numbers. So what it uses this theorem? So it uses well, first is Hiranaka's revolution of singularities, uh, and second, weak factorization theory. Weak factorization theory that I'll formulate it would be useful also for us. So, if I have two smooth projective varieties, say y1 and y2, then I have some birational map between them, phi birational. Then I can decompose it into a sequence of blow-ups and contractions with smooth centers. There's a sequence of blow-ups and blow-downs with smooth centers. Can, can you step aside for a second so that we see the relation? Huh? I couldn't see the relation. 
Yeah, so the relation, because uh, what, what is the blow up? If I look for the locus x without z, it's isomorphic to the locus of, outside of the exception of the lenses. So these two things, they equal to the class of non projective variety, but not just the complement. So this is the same variety. So this class equals to the class. So we can derive easily this relation using standard relation, but the theorem is that you can just look for this ring capital and it's the same. There's some homomorphs of things that's actually a nice one. Uh, or complex numbers. And dictatorization says that I can de decompose it into something like that. Something like that. So any birational map is a sequence of low ups and uh, so, uh, so arrows are arrows are blow ups with smooth centers. Kamovich Karu Matsuki and you say that it's What is the Not <laughs> So uh, there's this theorem, and uh, Bittner uses it to, to prove uh, this way of thing. And there, there's a view, uh, uh, the following theorem of Larson and Nutz, very, very beautiful, that gives a link between the Selink and Barash non So theorem of, of Larson and Nutz. 2000, also around 2002, and that's also around 2001. That uh, K, if I look for the quotient ring, I consider in this ring the ideal generated by class of unifying line. I consider the quotient ring. Then it's isomorphic to Z of SB. There's also some, some particular, particular map that is an isomorphism, where SB is monoid of, you can say, some smooth project, that smooth project, algebraic varieties, up to stable birational equivalence. Stable birational equivalence, and operation is multiplication. Operation. <coughs> Just Cartesian product. Cartesian product. So I call that say two varieties are equivalent if they are either birational on one or one is product of the other with a project space. So x1 is equivalent to two x2 if there exists a and b such that x1 times a is birational to x2 times b. In particular point, and all, all rational varieties are just class of the unit in this ring. So this is the monoid, and the, the statement says that there's some particular commorphism of the rings from K to here, and it's kernel as A, and if you consider the induced commorphism from this quotient ring to here, it's actually an isomorphism. So this, this gives some link between birational geometry and this, this ring. So it's a link between... If you have such a and B, you cannot necessarily find that they are such that one of them is zero. No, I don't know. Right? So there are some examples of different states, the barash, but not barash, but say So link between K and barash, not stable barash, not stable. Be very, very one of the main ingredients is the stable barrage. So the proof of the theorem uses three main ingredients. So first is weak factorization, second is Larson Lutz theorem, and third is some new beautiful relation that I'm going to turn on. That's specific for this has nothing to do with cubic form, but third is something very specific for cubic form. Probably now I will erase me just. Maybe oh, I'll give some. Some maybe some useful corollary from here. So I assume I have a rational variety. Then what does it mean? That's one of the basic ideas. 
that's used in Bayesian geometry. Uh, so if if I have x and I have some birational morphism to x to some projective space, say PT, or maybe to some other space, <coughs> then what can I say that now? Very easy proposition. Right? So proposition. And then class of x minus class of PD equals to L times sum of plus minus VI, where uh, VI are smooth. Again, classes. classes of smooth projective d minus two dimensional varieties. How to prove this? By so minus plus minus, so there's some signs. Oh my god. Sum of the i minus sum of i, sum of j, I don't know, v prime j. So the i and the j. J prime are classes of smooth projects D minus two dimensional varieties. Don't, How to prove it? Don't you need uh, to have somewhere higher power than if, if your central power has higher dimension than no, 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 no. You can show that actually. What I wrote is true. Because if you block the point, then uh, this V is just class of projects in space. By two, it's P D minus two. Because you replace point with, with the project of space, but then the difference of project is d minus two dimensional project of space. But the difference between pd minus two and point is line times pd minus two. So it's actually true. So. And what, what does it say? So if I have a rational fourfold, then it's, real, uh, it's class is what? Something, something simple plus L times some classes of surfaces. And that, that's the main idea. So if, if I look for some problem of birational geometry, then I need to know, well, varieties two dimensional less. For three folds, need to know what about the curves, something about the curves. For four folds, need to know something about the surfaces. <coughs> Actually, there's a similar, similar theorem to this for three folds that we can prove that if you have a rational three fold, then it's fun, fun, fun variety of points. It's by rational to the scheme of the points on the curve, and one can show it's impossible. So, for how to reconstruct the rational it's most three folds. <coughs> So that's the idea, but then we need some geometry. So what I told so far is not specific to, to cubic, so now, now I'll tell some, something specific for cubic forefolds. And in the formula, there's some very specific formula that holds in the Grotenic property of variety. So if I start, start from x, cubic hypersurface, cubic surface, d dimension. In particular, I, actually, I can start from take a the polynomial of degree 3. You can take on zero polynomial, so whatever you like. Then there's, there's this formula. Uh, That holds over any field, any base. Or one can write it um, so if if x is reduced, if x is reduced, good. that doesn't contain double hyperplane or something like that. Then one can rewrite it in this way: that s square of x symmetric square equals to x times one plus a to the d plus a square times f minus a to the d times symbol that symbol locus. But if you write this Hilbert scheme that already includes all the data here, that's more, more general. So this always works. And uh, there are many, many consequences you can derive from this formula. For example, you can derive 27 lines on a cubic surface just by looking at some realization taken homomorphism by Euler number. 
and from the next. Like single lot of effects, what is the state? Like single lot of effects, maybe single. This is dimensional x. So x is inside PD plus 1. But that's in all dimensions, not only for four. Yes. Just for all Kirby hypersurface. The relationship? Huh? What's, what's the relationship? One, one equals the other? One equals the other. So one of this is Hilbert scheme of two points on a Kirby hypersurface. Right? And this is class of x itself times class of projective space plus class of the fine line times class of variety of lines. So this formula has variety. Qubit, okay, it's variety of lines, and essentially it's symmetric square or it's Hilbert scheme of two points. So L to the D is, is PD. Uh, no, P PD equals to. Oh, that is plus point. Yes. PD is 1 plus L plus L squared plus yeah. so on plus okay. L to the D. You have a fine space in function of this project. But just because you only look for difference between Hilbert and symmetric square, there's a, a Hilbert to, to draw map and it's fiber so over diagonal or something like project bundles, so that's what makes the difference. So how would you derive this? Forward just the easiest class, it's just the study the fibers of Hilbert to draw map. But consider Hilbert to draw map and look for its fibers. So its fibers are projects in spaces of different dimensions. Is it a point or it's a project space? And then it matters yeah, whether the point down there was singular or not. So when it's singular, then you do it. Katy was asking about how you derive the beautiful form. Yeah, the beautiful form. It's uh, uh, something close to the property. Yeah, I'm also not sure. I'm also not sure. Yeah, after you know it, it's uh, everybody probably here can pull it easily. <laughs> so if, if, if I have, say, two points, P and Q, let's look for symmetrics. So I have P and Q. So what can, can I do? I can draw a line through them. I can draw a line. Or actually, if I have a point with a Hilbert scheme, it automatically gives me a line. Yes, I have a line. Then I can look for an intersection of this line with a Hilbert surface. Usually, it should be three points, so there should be three points. Yeah, usually, it should be three points, so there should be three points. Yeah, should be three points, so there should be in general, there should be extra one point R, so I can look for map that associates with P and Q, pair of R and A. So I have R inside X, X and A, just that contains R, but I, I, I say nothing about the relation of L to X. So this is class of symmetric square, so this is birational map between symmetric square of X, or that's some, some map between symmetric square of X and projectivization over X of topological bundle of the project space. So it's restriction to X. Right? And this map actually is barational. You can invert it if you have a point and you have a line, you show and you have two points. It's barational, but it's not everywhere defined. Where it's not badly defined. Where this line lies inside X. So if I want to regularize this map, here I need to blow up Hilbert scheme of two points on X with center in uh, such configurations where L lies inside of X, and that's projective bundle over variety of lines. So it's projectization over variety of lines of here of symmetric square of universal bundle. And then it becomes isomorphic to blow up with center of this PX CP, uh, the center projectivization of a variety of lines of universal bundle. Because here I have line and one point on this, and here I have line and two points with it. So if it's if X was smooth, then uh, what I draw here, here now I really regularized it's so isomorphic smooth varieties, but it holds for all possible you can also uh, just cut and paste, you can cut into pieces and make another one. Various ways of Important thing is when dimension is zero, somehow you can derive from zero dimensional case other cases by changing the base. And what we do after? So that's essentially the proof. Just if you do this, you, you get this formula. So how, how to prove the theorem? Now proof of the theorem. <laughs> so assume x is rational. <coughs> x is rational before. 
then uh, by this lemma we have the difference x minus p4 equals to a times sum of v i minus sum of v i v j prime, where v i and v j prime are surfaces. And uh, now plug this into this formula. So plug this relation into here. So this is by big factorization. Why is it in the surfaces? It's maybe a point or line. If you plot the point, I just well, this is what I replied to Sasha Kuznetsov. It is actually surfaces. Some of them may be just projective plates or root surfaces, but all of them are projective surfaces. <coughs> so now plug this relation into the here. So plug into main formula. And after you plug this to here, and you cancel different terms, you do some algebra, then you get the following thing. A squared times something equals to zero. What will be? I'll tell what the something. So something will look like this. This is something you really need to do together because it's a simple option. Huh? <laughs> yeah, it's easier to do than to, to repeat. Yeah. So something will look like this. First of all, it will be f here, right? Because I already had f squared times f. So it will be f plus some, some classes of smooth projective varieties plus something smooth projective equals to uh, sum of uh, at S maybe I times S J or sum I J where this is products of surfaces plus sum maybe over K Q Q uh, Q two of maybe S K where all S are smooth projective surfaces so I get so this is something so uh, I, I plug this into to here, and then I get L squared equals to something equals to zero. That's where I use this conjecture, consolation conjecture. So here, so Start. Huh? How do you get rid of heap two of x? Ah, uh, well, you have two symmetric squares. So then there's a formula: oh, yeah. S square of a plus b is something like a square of a plus a times b plus the square of b, and there's a similar formula for square a minus b equals to or something. So it will have only symmetric squares, products, and symmetric squares. And symmetric square you can replace with here. Right? So this is easier to derive. If you say that zeta function is multiplicative, so this is kind of then that we get some, some explicit formulas for this. Zeta function is just pro sum of all, but you, you need on the first return. Where do you have A plus B and Because here, I have x equals to P4 plus some sum. So x is now is some big sum. And here I have S square of x. It's sum and difference. But then it, it, it will be just so S square of x. When I plug it, I have like some yes. lots of symmetric squares of what I have in the terms and products of these terms. This is some science. So here I don't, don't even write what's the sign, so it's positive. positive. So the SIs are the BIs before? Huh? The SIs are the BIs? Yeah, yeah, so SIs is up to, uh, you can work with indices properly because you have some left hand side, something on the right hand side, but in part of just how it looks that it is A is a product of surfaces or D minus two dimensional varieties. You can do it in all dimensions. Or Hilbert's scheme of two points on D minus two dimensional varieties. And now I'll rephrase the theorem of Larson and Lunds in a more useful way. There's some technical lemma that's more useful for, for implications. So, uh, <coughs> some lemma from Larson and Lunds. Larson and Lunds, as I told, they say that if you have some relation modulo L, if this holds, it also will hold modulo L. So, so yeah, I forgot to say that this implies that, well, L implies that F plus something equals the sum of. Well, that's something equals to zero, right? So, something. So, that's why we use conjecture. Something equals to zero. And the something is just this. So, if, if this conjecture is true, then I will have the class of f plus something equals sum of this class. So, 
Well, actually, it's even more class from the and would say if I have some relation like this, some relation between classes of smooth projects of varieties, then uh, well, they have same number of terms. If if sum of a i equals to sum of b j where a and b are smooth projects, i from one to n maybe j from one to n modulo l. I don't even need the equality. I need equality of only modulo l. Then m equals to m, there should be the same number of terms. And there's a bijection between i and j, there's a sigma i to sigma to j equals to sigma of i, such that uh, a i is stable by rational to be j, b sigma of i. So if I have some equality between classes of smooth projective varieties, some sum of connected varieties, then there's the same number of connected components, and I, I can uh, reorder them such that they are stably rational to each other. So it means that here, this final variety of lines should be stably rational as of two product of two d minus two dimensional varieties, or to Hilbert scheme of two points on some d minus two dimensional variety. So if I have rational cubic hypersurface, then it's a azer f x is stably rational to some S, maybe V I times J, or F X is stable by rational to Q to two F V K. Well, we know nothing about this V, we just know it's some smooth project of D minus two dimensional variety. Uh, and then, uh, so that, that's what we're now use classification of varieties in low dimension. To deduce rationality for triple to four also. Uh, how we do for have like half an hour? Yes, maybe. Oh, okay, I can do three things with ten minutes and four folds in another. It's not, not complicated. So if dimension equals to three. Uh, then a uh, fun variety of, of, of lines on the cubic triple puts a surface of general type, and it has this code structure. 1, 5, 5, 10, 25, 10, and then it's symmetric. So what for me important that uh, to every variety x, I can associate polynomial psi x that equals to sum of Uh, h i zero of x times u to the i. So you take a three dimensional cube? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Take a three dimensional cube. So maybe, so general remark to every variety I can associate this polynomial. Some generating function for some particular code numbers that lie here. And this polynomial is a stable by rational environment. So this is SB environment. And also, product goes to product. So, psi of x times y equals to psi x times psi y. And this is polynomial with positive integer coefficients. Coefficients are integer and positive. Z no, plus of e. So, if, if my variety is stably by rational to product, then its polynomial should decompose into product of two other polynomials that has bounded degree. So, its degree is bounded by dimension of x, right? So, Degree of psi x is bounded by dimension of x. So if, if here, if, if fun variety of lines it's a surface, if it will be a stable by rational to product of two curves, c1 times c2, then this polynomial 1 plus 5u plus 10 u squared will decompose into product of two polynomials of degree at most 1. But actually it's decompo indecomposable over z. So it's impossible. <coughs> and, uh, so it remains the case that F might be a state of rational to uh, Hilbert scheme of two, well, not just two symmetric squares, essentially, it's already it's the same symmetric square of, of some curve C. And, well, if you look, they look very similar, but Hodge numbers are slightly different. If you look for symmetric square, here we have 26, maybe it's 25. Almost the same. 
So why this is not true? Uh, well, if this would be true, uh, this is already a minimal order. C is held in five. Say again? C is held in five. Yeah, so C should be a curve of genus five, and one of them is already a minimal model. So maybe this one. <coughs> yeah, so this one is a minimal model. So if they are stably birational and they are not unirules, they actually there should be a map, there should be birational, there should be a map from here to here. But so this will mean that the car number of f is not is not less than the car number of s, s squared. But if you look for the approach numbers, they are different. So wrong uh, inequalities between uh, the car numbers. Here it's very important that uh, this variety is the of general type, then not not junior root, not called the rational curves. So that's that's it for the three folds. And uh, what to do with the four folds? It's very similar here. Just now, now need to use classification of four folds or oh, surfaces. Uh, then f x is holomorphic subjective uh, HS. So as we all know its Hodge numbers are like this. For me it's important only this. So psi f psi f equals to one plus u squared plus u to the four. And uh, this polynomial is actually reducible, right? That equals to one plus u plus u squared times one minus u plus u squared. This is totally reducible. But what's the problem that here I have negative coefficients? It's not good. It's coefficients are dimensions. So it's not decomposable the product of two. So psi f not equal to p one p two times p two or degree the i is not at most two and coefficients are not needed. It's impossible. So it means that one variety of lines, of course, is not a product, not stably by rational the product of anything. So it remains the case that one variety of lines, fx, is stably by rational to Hilbert scheme of two points on S, where S is some surface. S is some surface. So now, if Kadaira dimension of S is more than zero, then Kadaira dimension of uh, cube two of S, cube two of S, is at least twice Kadaira dimension of S. So it also is more than zero because uh, just we can consider the grain, the Ranesian bedding, the grain bedding, and its projection and. Uh, it's unramified uh, outside to dimension two. It's not zero. Like for curves, it's not true. For higher dimension, it's okay. So it means that S should should have Kadaira dimension non-positive. If S has Kadaira dimension minus infinity, minus infinity, if Kadaira of S equals to minus infinity, then well, Kadaira of two of, of S actually also minus infinity. That's not good. So it remains the case that Kadaira so dimension. Oh. So it cannot be stable for this one. Yeah, the polynomial will be constant. Yeah, so then mm -hmm. just can say that psi of this is to us. So it means that the dimension of x equals to zero and uh, Psi s equals to one plus u squared. So h to zero equals to one. The notification surface is a KT surface. So s is birational to KT surface. So s to s prime and s prime to KT. And then we can change uh, uh, check other numbers to see if it is a KT surface. So s is a KT surface. So s is a KT. Uh, what, what else can we say that uh, how to relate our condition with some other conjecture? Uh, Sorry, we have to also dispense the word state because I think it's made 
variation, and this is just a different variation. Ah, okay, that, that's the same trick. So if varieties are not linear root, then uh, same dimension, daily variation means variation. And here we have other dimensions. The problem is when the variation occurs. It can be good. <coughs> So maybe some remarks about how it's related to some other conjectures I haven't told yet. So, Hasser uh, studied Hodge structures. So, the idea is that Hodge structures H4 of X, as you know by David and Danaga, it's very similar to H2 of F. Yeah, okay. so, this implies this conjecture, right? I, I yeah, yeah. Mention that? yeah. Okay. This also implies Hessen's uh, conditions. And Hessen's condition already implies this. Because Hilbert's scheme of two points on the surface, its Picard number is already two, right? So here Picard number, there are two algebraic cycles, and by your theorem, here you should have two algebraic cycles. Imagine it. Uh, so it's similar to H2 of F, and if F is H2 of Q2S, it says equals to H2 of S plus 1 more letter, H, so minus 2 letter. So all these three whole structures are related, and has a convention that if uh, cubic forefoot is rational, then its primitive code structure uh, on force cohomology should be the primitive code structure uh, on uh, contains a primitive code structure on some K3 surface. So conjecture of Hasset says that, Hasset, that if X rational, rational now, then exists K3 surface S that's product of and maybe some vector H. D1 inside H2 of S and 2 plus is alpha 1. So alpha 1 is hyperplane square and maybe alpha 2 inside H4 of X such that D1 orthogonal is isomorphic to alpha 1, alpha 2 orthogonal in the sense of Hodge structures. Right? It's Hodge structures. So Hodge structure, the primitive Hodge structure of X. That they are talking about a linear section and some other cycle. There should be some other cycle, and together the atom was the same as for structure. Some K3 surface, so it's called associated K3 surface in the sense of Hasset. And then uh, you can look for so called special cubic fourfold cells definition. Uh, X is special if uh, it's a uh, rank of Hodge cycles at least two, or maybe you can look for those special cycles for some particular degree for this particular uh, lattice, and can study in terms of discriminant of this lattice. If uh, Hodge 4 of x is 2, and there are uh, some family of divisors, a model a space of all cubic fourfolds, there are some countable union of divisors of so called special cubic fourfolds, and you can uh, look for some numerics for D, some discriminant of this lattice, discriminant of which, of this particular sublattice. Maybe there are more, but it should be this discriminant of some lattice. And there are some numerical conditions for this D of B, there's some something model A, and so on and so forth. And uh, so, so there's one conjecture. And I say it in one way, so rational should imply this. And in particular, the conjecture says that generic is irrational. Actually, there's other part that's so-called easy, but in fact, it's also very hard. If you know that this holds, why, why this should be rational? They need to const give some rationality construction. There are not so many of them that you know. Well, something that I started from now, the constructions of fun and more and so on. Uh, and uh, there's another uh, conjecture by Sasha Kuznetsov, like in terms of derived categories. Can you say one more time? What's the definition? What's the relation between the special and this conjecture? Or well, Hasset says for if cubic surface is rational, it should be special and more. Moreover, there, yeah, yeah. Moreover, there's some particular numerical condition for this number d. And uh, so Kuznetsov 
Uh, he studied the direct category of coherent shapes on cubic form of db coch. What I'm telling now is not in the paper, but there are some things we just skip for. So all of the readers can So db coch of x is all of 1 of 2 and a x. And this is this k3 like, like category. a x is k3 which collapsed out to category of k3 types. And then Sasha notices that if cubic is rational, then likely that this category will actually turn so conjecture of cubic so says that x is rational if and only exists S, K3 such that HX is isomorphic to the of S. So this, this category is really geometric, this category of coherent shifts on K3 surface, if and only it's rational. And there are some tricky examples, for example, if you have a cubic fourfold that contains a plane, but generic one, then one can construct some K3 surface, but here AX will be twisted category, some twisted shifts or some non-trivial problem. And uh, that's a theorem recently by uh, Hassett and Eddington. Hassett. And it's again, there are two, two arrows, and it's not so clear how to construct either of them, so from right to left probably should be some uh, realized X or some moduli space here, but uh, not, not really clear. Like starting from A, you need to construct this category. I should discuss it. Huh? Ah, say again? I would replace Thomas. Yeah, yeah. What are Agent and Thomas? Right. Agent and Richard Thomas. So, recently they show that conjectures of Hasset and conjectures of Hasset are generically almost the same. Hasset is generically the same. Yes, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> I noticed that they're similar. Yeah, if you look from the archive, that today there's another by Nick Eddington that he told us yesterday that he studies uh, our condition that variety of lines is birational to the system of the surface. So this condition and says that ours actually is stronger, it requires more. There are some examples, sub, sub D, first D is 74. Where the conditions of Hasset and Kuznetsov seem to be okay, but our conditions say it's, it's not okay. So there are, there are less. So, uh, some agents from today, so agents from today says that if F, F is birational to Q to S, this implies Hasset Kuznetsov. And there are counterexamples of Hasset Kuznetsov holds, but this is not holds. D equals to 74 is no way back. So if one variety of lines, there is not a numerical conditions for this to hold. So D is now not the dimension. Ah, no, not the dimension. D is this discriminant, this degree of helitis. The discriminant of helitis. So basically, he says that this condition is stronger than the other. So this is cubic four folds for which your condition doesn't hold, but the conditions of yes, yes. And likely this four fold. So either it's rational than this cancellation conjecture is wrong, or probably just. Probably it's just strong than that. There's this, like their condition is necessary, but not sufficient. Because it was not clear actually, and now not so clear why, why this kind of condition will be sufficient. If it's sufficient, then you need to have rationality construction. Or something like that. <coughs> uh, so that's the theorem, and just put its proof and some consequences. Uh, Other consequence that I have not wrote, so I'll put some conjecture. This conjecture is actually the first step, step that studied before we actually made our work. We started from different conjecture about direct category. So you start from any cubic form. X, any cubic, is any cubic form. Then you can associate two things. You can associate variety of lines, it's a variety of one of these And you can associate categories. It's a category of K3 types. So that's IHS4 variety. And you have K3 category. 
Then you can ask what's the relation between them. And conjecture says that the right category of coherence sticks of F x is isomorphic to a square of hx. So this is where some symmetric square of a category in the sense of Gantt and Caprano. It does hold for some cases, for example, it's true for Python, essentially due to Bavir Danage and to Makai correspondence. So true for Python, true for X Python. And actually what our beautiful formula implies that, that I already erased, there's some, there's some extra work, that there's simple grotted and green ring of categories that's similar to grotted and ring of varieties, there's a grotted and green ring of perfect categories, generators are perfect categories, relations are semi-orthogonal decomposition. So if you have semi-orthogonal decomposition, that totals the sum of two, two pieces of this of decomposition. And it, it holds actually <coughs> for class db hoch, that's that's t db hoch of fx is uh, equals to plus of a square of ax in k0 of categories. Is this a real called pt plus constructed by model plus in all its behaviors? Is this in the future? No, 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 no. They don't put anything for the right categories, just for the simple So everybody can do yeah, so this conjecture, and uh, Eyal Markman last Friday, he gave a very interesting talk that he says that they associate pochlomotic synthetic variety and, and AK3 like category. So, what could actually be the case that this category that they associate can have the same relation? It might be completely related, but might be not because there are some That's another direction. It seems that the large part of the proof works in any dimension. Yeah, you can go to up to any dimension and get that it should be either Hilbert scheme or product. But then, after you know that your variety of lines is Hilbert scheme of product, what you do later? Because starting from dimension 5, fun variety of lines becomes a fun manifold in the sense of viscosity. Mm -hmm. It's rationally connected, it's psi polynomial just one. Uh, psi polynomial doesn't control it's anything. anything. Yeah. Well, it says that psi polynomials of this guy should be also trivial. I mean. It's like you can study them whether my, this variety of lines itself is rational. <laughs> I don't know. So, so it gives some necessary condition, but then it's not so clear on like how, how strong is it what to do later. Because before. Uh, do you have an analog of your formula for the final scheme of lines or for other varieties like uh, for property with them? So maybe some formula for the final scheme of points on which is related to the ah, system. I forgot. Uh, we expect the similar formula to hold for variety. There's variety constructed by Len, Len, uh, Zorger, and Manstratton of twisted, related to twisted cubics and cubic fourfold. And uh, we expect there's a similar formula, you can write even explicitly what is it, it's very huge actually formula, they're much bigger, that relates Hilbert scheme of four points on K3 surface. That, but, and if, if it holds, we cannot prove the formula yet itself. But this formula proves easy when we take out this, this line and this. We can write a conjecture that this formula should hold, but cannot yet prove it. But it involves like symmetric powers of your so as a cubic fourth, the symmetric powers of your x of your cubic fourth of on one side, and some just variety of this lemon zot and mustard and variety on the other side. But it is true for again for Python, thanks to work of of physical of Eisenstein and Lem, because they show that for Python it is just the same. Uh, the, the variety of Lem Lem Mastrat and Zorgen is the same as Hilbert scheme of four points on the the same KT surface. But that's what we mean because for the class of varieties they're the same. If you have two color BLs that are variation, they're the same class. So similarly we can draw a conjecture, some uh, some enhancement of this beautiful formula for four, and but we cannot prove it yet. And, and for the categories we also expect that it should be just force power so that uh, the derived category of Lem Lem Manstrat and Zorgers variety should likely to be symmetric force power of your category. Questions? Okay.
case. Let's have more clearly. Thanks. Which I would uh, flip on, so if anybody has questions, I'm going to check them.